Hey guys, my name is Mitsumio, and welcome to our episode of Sunday Mailbox. This is a video series where you, the viewer, can submit your gaming-related questions, and then I'll give my humble opinion on them. To get the format is out of the way real quick, if you'd like to submit your own question that could be featured in an upcoming episode, you can do so by leaving a comment down below, or by sending me a Facebook or Twitter message. The first question for that comes from Brandon, and it is, what are your thoughts on Ubisoft bringing back drop shotting? So a lot of people have brought this up. You may have noticed that in the last couple of days, if you've been playing ranked, that ever since this most recent update, that people have been running around as fast as they can, and then as soon as they get into engagement with someone, they drop to the ground, and there's no penalty for doing so. And so I'm happy to say, or at least kind of happy to say, uh, that this is just a glitch. Ubisoft plans, hopefully in the very near future, to update us and uh, make the change to revert it back to what it was, uh, but right now, it isn't intended, and it's something that they are going to be dressing in the future. I think what's more disappointing is that, yes, it sucks that glitches happen, code and software development isn't easy, stuff like this does occur, but the fact that I'm seeing so many people taking advantage of it already, just to get that edge on other players, even knowing that it's not something that was intended, is kind of disappointing, but I guess that's just competitive FPS games in a nutshell. And so to answer all of your questions, no, this is is not intended and hopefully they are going to be resolving it and bringing it back to what it was in the very near future. The next question comes from Nicholas and it is, why do you think that Jackal is being banned every game? This was something that I was really curious to see how it was going to evolve ever since they did add in the pick and ban system. What operators were going to get banned and for what reason? Now, a lot of people are saying that the reason why he is getting sidelined is because he's overpowered. He's way too strong right now, but I don't really think that that's the case. Yes, I think that Jackal is really strong in the right hands, but I don't necessarily think that he's an overpowered operator. If we take a look at the chart that Ubisoft supplies us every once in a while, you'll notice that he actually has one of actually the lowest win rate out of every single one of the offensive operators. His pick rate is quite high, and I think that's due in part because people want to counter roamers, but his win rate is pretty abysmal. I think what it really just comes down to, and this is true for a lot of other operators, like Blitz, for example, is that they're not necessarily overpowered. It's just not fun going against them. If you're someone who likes to roam, and there's a lot of people out there that enjoy roaming around the map, it's a key component of Rainbow Six Siege, to have someone track you all the time uh, gets annoying quickly. It really just seems like that counters you entirely, and there's nothing you can really do about it. I guess what you could do is try to make your way back to the objective, but a lot of times you're unsuccessful in doing so. I think another reason why this might be the case is that there isn't a lot of interaction between offense and defense in this case. When you're playing as a defender, there's really nothing that you can do to stop the Jackal from scanning you, unless you're directly next to him when he's trying to get the scan off while he's leaving himself a little bit vulnerable. There isn't a whole lot that you can do to stop him. You could, I guess, argue that you could slowly crawl around the map from the objective to where you want to camp, but that's pretty ridiculous. No one's going to take the effort to do that, and honestly, that's probably going to leave you more vulnerable than not. I feel like this same concept can be applied to a lot of the other operators that are getting sidelined right now, like Monty and Blitz. Blitz charges at you with his shield. He has a really annoying hitbox, especially on his hand. It feels like it's almost impossible to hit him sometimes. He, of course, has the protection of the shield. He gets in your face, he flashes you, and then it's GG. There's not a lot that you can do on defense to counter that, and it can be incredibly frustrating in a 1v1 situation. And so the hope that I have is that, especially for future operators and for Jackal, that they try to infuse more of those dynamics between offense and defense. Now, I will admit, I'm not entirely sure how they could actually change Jackal in a meaningful way that would actually accomplish that goal, but Ubisoft are a, a clever bunch of developers, and I have faith that they could actually figure something out. And so all in all, I think that's just really what it comes down to. Don't don't underestimate the power of an annoying operator. Something that's not fun to go against, people are going to avoid that, and clearly I think that is what's going on here. The next question comes from Ellie, and it is, why do you think that Ubisoft isn't focusing any effort on maps that need to be reworked like Favela and Bartlett? Why are they reworking maps that are in a good place? Well, I would argue that a lot of the maps that they plan on reworking, or the ones that they already have, weren't actually in a good place. Hereford Base, while I know the original is a bit of a fan favorite, probably due in part because nostalgia, it was one of the original maps in Rainbow Six Siege, it was not balanced whatsoever. It was very offensive favored. There weren't a lot of ways for the defensive team to roam around, hit the, the offensive team from a different side, and so it needed a rework. 
Now, I know what we got really wasn't up to the standards that we were expecting. That top floor is a nightmare, but by and large, the actual idea of reworking that map, I think, came from a good place. That same policy can be applied to canals. It may be a fun map to play every once in a while, but just like Hereford and a lot of the other casual maps, the reason why they're there is because they're not balanced. Defense only has one way to move between the two different buildings. There's only a couple of ways for offense to get into the top floor, which which can be quite frustrating, and so they're going on in and making that rework next season. And while I can kind of see where you're coming from with something like Cafe and Theme Park, for example, most people I think would argue that they are competitive. I know that some have choice words for Theme Park. A lot of people aren't really too fond of that map, but by and large, it is a decent map for a rank scene, and so why not focus on some of the maps that do have extensive problems like Favela and Bartlett University? I think what it comes down to is they only have so many resources to spend on these reworks. There's only so many developers that can actually update these old maps. And also, I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing to try to make some of the ranked maps more competitive. As much as I enjoyed Cafe before the rework, it had its problems. Downstairs below in the basement really wasn't competitive whatsoever. It was heavily offensive favored. If you were on defense, it was basically an auto loss. I'm not saying it wasn't possible, but that was one of the reasons why why that map had some serious issues. And so for Ubisoft to go on in and make these great improvements, I, I don't see the problem with that whatsoever. I, I actually think that that is a bonus for the game. On top of that, like I said, there are only so many resources that they have available to them to make these changes. Do we focus on the maps that are already good and we can make them better? Or do we run the risk of basically having to completely rework something like Favela and Bartlett University? I think it would have to be a complete rework, something like they would did with Hereford, and that didn't go very well. Do we want to go that direction? Or do we want to go into existing maps that are already solid, but making them even better and trying to uh, to kind of solve some of their weaknesses. And so I guess what I'm trying to say is, is I believe that Ubisoft is actually accomplishing what you want, but not going all in with it. They're, they are reworking old maps that do need basically a top to bottom rework, like Canals, Hereford Base, but they're also going into existing maps that just need some improving and making those subtle adjustments. They're essentially trying to give us the, the best of both worlds. The next question comes from Tristan and it is, what if Siege made an economy type system where in the beginning you started only with recruits and later into the round you could buy an operator to play for that round. And if you didn't die, you could play him again in the next round, similar to CSGO. Well, I will admit that this does sound pretty cool in theory, but admittedly, I think it comes with a lot of problems and probably wouldn't work in a game like Rainbow Six Siege. One issue that immediately sticks out to me is how are you going to assign the different point values for all of the operators? Are all operators a set cost? Do certain ones cost more depending on what they do? Does Habana, because she gets through reinforced walls, cost more than something like a, like a Thatcher, for example? How are you gonna balance all of that out? On top of that, if offensive team doesn't do very well for the first couple of rounds and they don't have someone that has enough points to actually buy the Habana, how are you gonna be able to get through those wall reinforcements? There are some objectives where it's almost required for you to actually have that operator and to not even be able to have the ability to unlock them or use them is going to cause some serious issues. Another issue that I can think of is that Rainbow Six Siege doesn't have nearly as many rounds as a lot of these other video games. And so if you do poorly for those first couple of rounds, you're able to make it up later on. But as you guys all know, in Siege, especially considering that the rounds are much longer, there's a lot much more preparation phase, uh, you only go to four wins to actually win the game. And so if you lose those first couple of matches, you're, you're basically at this massive disadvantage, and so I just I just don't see how all of that would work. Now, you could get around this by increasing the length of the game, but I don't think people want to have like an hour long, hour and 30 long match of Siege. I could be wrong, maybe people are looking for that, but I think the vast majority of the player base wouldn't be on board for something like that. And so while this could be a side project that Ubisoft could work on, if they wanted to actually allocate the resources to do so, maybe they could have a playlist in the future. They've been having more and more of these playlists like uh, the Rainbow is Magic. They could add this kind of a feature 
but I just don't think that it fits the entire Rainbow Six Siege theme and the way that the game plays right now, but of course that is just my two cents. Uh, but yeah guys, that is been it for today's episode of Sunday Mailbox. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you thought about what we discussed in today's video. Do you agree with my assessment for why people are sidelining Jackal? Do you think it's for some other reasons? Let me know down below in the comments. As always, if you'd like to submit your own question for a future episode, you can also leave a comment or by sending me a Facebook or Twitter message. But until next time, guys, have a good one and take it easy.